Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ruben. I'm a PhD candidate at Leiden University, and I will be speaking about uh, parliaments and uh, economization. And economization is a concept uh, coined by some economists, and in this case, that's actually useful because it implies uh, a process whereby things become economic or become viewed in economic terms. Uh, so, Kalisk and Kellen define it as the assembly and qualification of actions, devices, and analytical practical descriptions as economic. So something is not economic before, and then it turns economic. So it's become a subject of economic language, of economic logics, economic ways of thinking in terms of efficiency, of course, benefit analysis. Um, and it also relates to the more broader political concept of economocracy. So instead of a democracy, li we live in an economocracy where things are increasingly viewed through an economic lens. Um, and this is, of course, a very big claim, and I wanted to test it in my parliamentary data, because in my PhD I study uh, uh, parliamentary language and parliamentary forms of argumentation. Um, so I was wondering about economization in the post war parliament. And uh, I study uh, Dutch lower house speeches in, uh, in the post war period from 1945 to the 1990s, and that's the period when this process takes off. Uh, that's also the period when the economy emerges after the war as a sort of singular unit. Um, and the method by which I do this is uh, 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 topic modeling. I first considered just looking at frequencies, for example, biograms that start with economic, but because of the sort of complex semantics of the term economic in Dutch, uh, that, that was a bit risky. So I want to take a more comprehensive approach to parliamentary language, and I turn to topic models. Um, because if you run a topic model on parliamentary speeches, you, got, you get policy areas, but also uh, rhetorical tropes uh, and procedural language. And those are the ingredients by which I aim to study economization. Um, I'm a big fan of LDA, so I use LDA, and because of its probabilistic nature, it's also suitable for the methods I use. Um, I settled for 250 topics, and uh, I did some manual labeling and also uh, uh, manual removing of some uh, of these rubbish topics you often get when topic modeling. Uh, and then what I did with the topic model is the following. Um, just looking at the prominence of economic topics doesn't say much, uh, because it also requires setting uh, some uh, manual economic topics, and that's risk cherry-picking. Um, but also, Parliament just debates economic stuff, so and that is not necessarily uh, economization. So what I did, I looked at topic rankings and uh, speech topic diversity, and I will come back to that later. So the first method is uh, uh, looking at topic rankings. So the question here is, are economic topics latently present in speeches that are not primarily about economic issues? So to the right, you see... Uh, the top topics, uh, uh, the distribution of some of the top topics in a speech, and the speech is clearly about elderly care uh, uh, for uh, about a third of the text. Um, and that's usually what, what, what you sort of take for granted, so you say this speech is about elderly care. But if you look below the surface, in this case uh, visually, then you can see that there's all kinds of economic topics present in that speech. So there's a topic of budget space, so probably some austerity-related ideas going on there. Uh, topics about projects and plans and rhetorical topics that are annotated, uh, uh, labeled, uh, um, uh, um, as you can see, uh, about problems and the general interest and uh, SER reports, that's a kind of advisory body in, in uh, the Dutch uh, uh, political system. So you can see that below the surface there's sort of sometimes economic logics going on. And I try to sort of, sort of map how this happened and if, if this increases over time. Um, so I basically ask, in what proportion of speeches is a topic ranked first or second or a third or fourth? Um, and how does the relation between rank one and rank two proportions change? And is that different for economic topics? Um, so I basically create two time series, one with the proportions for rank one and one with the proportions for rank two. Um, and then I calculate the subtracted time series by uh, subtracting rank one from rank two, and then I sort the topics uh, by their mean uh, rank 2 uh, minus rank 1. And I also identified topics with an increasing time series of this uh, uh, subtracted trend. So what you get then, if you, if you sort them, and then topics with a low uh, rank 2 minus rank 1, these are topics that are very topical in a given moment. So, uh, for example, we have a topic about Indonesian sovereignty. There was a big thing about, uh, uh, after the war. And, and there was a topic that's being talked about a lot then. But if that topic is latently present in a speech, that's at the same time when the topic is uh, often ranked first. So, and, and these are often these sort of hotly debated political topics. Then, if you look at the other end of the tail, you can see that there are more 
sort of structural topics. Um, so, for example, calculations and prognosis is a bit more abstract topic. Um, and there, the rank two uh, line, that's the, the small dotted line, is actually higher than the rank one line. Um, so, this topic is, is more often sort of below the surface than ranked first. Um, so, and this, you can see all, all these kinds of more structural topics, and you can see some economic logics here. So, industrial policy, uh, institutional competence is always about uh, how, how the state is functioning. Um, so, you can already see some hints of economization here. But, of course, as you can see in the trend lines, they're not all, they're not all increasing. So, there's no linear economization. Um, and therefore, I sort of mapped the topics that I show a, a more or less increasing line, or sorted them by, uh, by their slope. Uh, and then you can see that the topics that are, that are increasing in this subtracted rank trend, I hope you can still follow me, um, uh, they are often about these uh, more structural issues, so they are rhetorical tropes, and they are often about uh, uh, economic issues as well, so budget space, evaluation, uh, again, this calculation and prognosis topic, budget cuts. So you can see already the signs here of some instances of economization. Then the second metric I use is uh, uh, looking at the diversity of the topic distributions within a speech. So I ask, our speech is about economic uh, topics or the economy increasingly about other things as well. So I take the speeches where the uh, uh, economic topics are ranked first, and then I see what's, what's the sort of spread of other topics in there. And I use entropy as a diversity index here, and uh, small entropy indicates a small number of high-scoring topics. So this speech is only about this topic. And a higher entropy indicates a higher number of high-scoring topics. So it's, it's harder to say what the speech is exactly about. And the idea here is that the, uh, the entropy in case of economization would, would actually become higher over time. Because if you have economic topics, they would be about a lot of other stuff as well. So it's basically the same as the ranking idea, but then from the other, uh, 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 just from the other side. And if you then look at the uh, uh, entropy trends, that's the uh, uh, brown line here, um, and you sort them again by their slopes, you can see also some economic topics increasing in entropy uh, over time. Um, and uh, um, uh, you might say, is this not just an effect of the overall frequency of the topic? So that's the small dotted line here. So in the case of austerity, for example, you can see that before austerity becomes uh, much talked about in the 1980s, there's already an increase in entropy. So uh, a lot of things are being connected to this topic of austerity already in the 1960s. So, using this method, I can uh, actually indicate, uh, uh, sort of find topics that show this increasing trend, and I can identify uh, potential instances of economization. So, to conclude, there is no linear economization, of course, that's a very, uh, the first conclusion as a historian, um, uh, but there are some signs of an encroachment of the economic in specific areas, for example, austerity. Um, um, but in the end, you also have to wonder, is this are these trends we're seeing, is it actually economization or something else? And I think it's something else, namely the emergence of policy making. So a more technical approach to politics, which includes some economic logics, or forms of economization, but it's a bit more broader. And that also explains some of the other structural increasing topics uh, that you see. Uh, that was it. Thank you.